Hello YouTube, my name is Kirby. In today's video, we are going to be focusing a little bit on my first time filleting a fish. A really big fish with my new knife. So, the special ingredient that we have today is going to be something a little bit, well, the truth. Because the special ingredient that we have today is a fresh fioch trout. There are many several brands of fiorch trouts that's being transported all the way from Norway to Malaysia once or twice per week. But you see, the brand called Leroy is actually one of the most popular brands among all. There's actually other kinds of brands, maybe Ferda, Hofsef, Kos, I don't know, there's plenty of other kinds of brands. But I kind of say that this brand, Leroy, is actually one of the most popular brands that is available in the market all around Malaysia. The fish is not from Malaysia, obviously, but a lot of Japanese restaurants, they tend to use this as a substitute of salmon thanks to its fatty content, the color, and of course, the price actually. Because this fish is actually slightly cheaper than Atlantic salmon. You can see that this box here actually shows that this is a really nice premium grade fresh trout. You can actually see the label here, the name, the weight of the fish, and the importer, and quite a number of barcodes which I hardly even understand what it is. So, now then, with the nice new catchphrase that I've come up with, now I'm gonna say it nicely and safely. Let's create a dish. So now, let's start with the introduction of this fish. I'm sure some of you would probably say something like, hey, wait a minute, that's a salmon. Well, technically you're half true because the full name of this fish is called salmon trout. But this is not the same species as the Atlantic salmon that you actually find in Malaysia. There's quite a number of difference between a fiorch trout and an Atlantic salmon. So, in supermarkets, you can actually see people selling this fish, but they do not label it as trout, they label it as salmon. This is because of the popularity of the color of the fish, the fattiness of the fish, and well, pretty much the price of the fish. So, let's take a look about this. In comparison in between a fjord trout and an Atlantic salmon, you can see that the head here is pretty much smaller compared to the Atlantic salmon. An Atlantic salmon's head was most probably going to be around like this much. The weight of the head of a trout is actually less compared to the weight of the salmon. And this is actually the skin of the salmon. There's a lot of goo on it which is actually pretty much normal in fish. Why? This is actually the protective layer of the trout which well, lets them become watery and slimy. So this is actually normal and good. In this part here, the belly, you can actually see, feel that the belly here has a lot of fat and the belly is much bigger compared to the salmon. Another difference is that the skin of a fox shrub is actually much more thicker and fattier, which means it's not as suitable as it is to be using to make salmon fish skin chips. If you actually filleted the inside parts of the trout, you'll actually notice that the meat is a couple times more redder compared to Atlantic salmon. But you see, the thing is, Malaysians are the type of people that actually eat based on their eyes. They're gonna say like, oh my god, this fish is so red, so nice color, the fattiness is there. Alright, this fish is more fresh, but it actually doesn't work that way. You see, when you sell this fish to maybe Caucasians, or maybe Japanese people, or maybe even those rich people as well, they all tend to prefer Atlantic salmon over Fort Strong. Before I cut this fish up, I'm gonna announce that I'm gonna make four different dishes out of it. The first one is going to be sashimi, that's all. The second one is I'm going to make a salmon graflax. It's a Norwegian dish which is actually made out of curing salmon with dill, salt and sugar. Then the third dish, I'm going to make a salmon tata. And the fourth dish, I'm going to make a salmon quesadilla. Well then, let's start by descaling the fish. I'm gonna give this a small rinse. And I'm gonna scrap all the scales off one by one. You can see that the belly here is very big. My whole hand can enter the belly. Okay, one side of the salmon is clean. I'm gonna start with the other side. Back on the board. 
his scaling is done. Now the camera can totally see that the skin is significantly whiter compared to the salmon. Salmon sometimes they have this dot 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 dots but for the trouts they don't really have it. So now I'm going to open here and see wow this is the amount of fat. The belly part here is really really nice and oily and the Japanese restaurants they like to call this as the otoro part. Trust me this is very nice to eat. So I'm going to start filleting the fish but before that I'm going to introduce a new addition to my knife family. I bought it yesterday just for this. A Japanese deba knife. This is going to be a very very useful knife to fillet fish or do a lot of multi-purpose items. So I'm going to unbox it here. Okay, so let's I got it for a discounted price. Wow, you can feel how sharp this is right now. Alright, can't wait to wash it and then I'm going to fillet the trout with this knife. To do a V cut head, I'm going to put my knife here at around the collar and then I'm just going to slice it here like this. Oops, too slippery. But that's a good sign though. And then turn it around. Cut it here like that. This is called a V cut. Okay, done. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an incision here and separate the belly bones between the spine. So I'm going to start by cutting one straight line here like that. So I'm going to cut just a little bit part here. You, you most probably can feel the bones around here and then turn the fish around. Then after that, just above the fin here, I'm going to make another line. So this line, I'm going to cut it around here like this. Oh, it's still slippery. Nice. You can cut it like this as well. Slowly cut the line out. Feel the bones. Making an incision here. Continue the incision. I'll get better at this in no time. And done. Ooh, my meat is kind of damaged by a little, but oh well, I'll trim it later. So for the next fillet, I'm going to put a cloth here for safety and grip purposes. And then I'll be cutting it just like this. You can feel the bones cracking. Okay, I don't really like this deba knife, but I can't really blame the knife on everything. I just really need to get used to the knife, that's all. And then, for this part here, there's going to be the tail part where the bone gets bigger around here. Done. Salmon bone removed. That, and then there'll be this part here where I'm going to have to remove the fins. It's going to be trimming just around this part here. There you go. Well, I'm not really that good in filleting, but oh well. So for the next part, I'm going to be removing the belly bones. So to do this, all you have to do is just put your knife here at the belly bones, tilt it up and slice. Slowly work your way through the belly. Like this. You can go bigger if you want. Here, I missed the spot. And when you reach this part here, you can just rip off the bones like that. Okay, I haven't reached the end. There you go. Alright, so now the next step of filleting this fish is I'm gonna have to remove the pin bones one by one. If you move your fingers around here to here, somewhere around the middle, you'll actually be able to feel the pin bones. So you're gonna have to cut that out one by one. I'm gonna use a clipper and pull this off one by one like this. If you're lazy, you can actually use a knife to make an inc incision around here and then you can easily pull off the bones. If you want to take the pin bones out easily, all you have to do is just pull just up there, twist it by a little and press up like this, there. So pretty much all the pin bones are removed. 
So right now I'm going to portion the salmon. I'm going to use half of salmon. The other half I'm going to give it away to my brother-in-laws. So I'm going to start the next part of the video by portioning the fish. I'm going to start with the graflax portion. I think I'm going to make around this much. So I'll be cutting around here. Next, sashimi bar. Sashimi, I'll be taking around, maybe around this much. This should do. Then I'll be cutting the middle over here like this and remove the skin. Alright, this is the sashimi part. And this part is the part that I'm going to use to make the salmon quesadilla. I'm going to mix the belly and some meat together. Next up, we have our salmon tata. So, salmon tata, I think I'm gonna mix the belly part with the meat part as well. So, I'm gonna cut approximately around this much. This much will do. Pretty much the same way, I'm gonna remove the skin. Okay, done. So, portioning is done. I'm gonna keep this part of the salmon for some other day when I'm actually hungry for salmon. Well then, the first thing I'm going to do is to start by cutting my sashimi. So, sashimi is actually just raw fish. So, yeah, here I go. Slicing. One slice, two slice, three slice. Okay, so I'm gonna place it here like this. So, I'm gonna leave this in the fridge while I prepare the other meals. Next up, I'm gonna cut all of this into cubes so that I can use it for my salmon tata and my salmon quesadilla. So, it's going to be a very easy job. Nice cubes. I'm going to mix the belly part together with the meat so that it adds more flavor to the mixture. Next part, this part here. This one can go like this. This one goes here, here. Okay, I got pretty much all I need for my salmon quesadilla and my salmon tata. Now that my butchering job is just about done, so I'm gonna start by making my salmon gravlax. The ingredients is actually pretty simple for my recipe. Salt, sugar, dill leaves and some lime. That's all. So we're gonna start with cutting off our dill leaves. I'm going to cut all in this packet except one stalk of a dill leaf maybe this. I'll put this back here for tomorrow. So I'm gonna cut all of this here. It really doesn't matter what kind of size I cut it to because I'm going to wash all of these pieces off by the next day. So just make it thick. A little bit stalk is okay. Alright, dill leaves done. So transfer it here. A little bit lime zest. And a tiny bit of lime juice. Done. And now a generous amount of sugar and salt. The sugar and salt is going to be balanced pretty much with each other. I'm gonna need probably around this much. And some rough salt, probably around this much. So I'm gonna give this a mixture. There you go. This is done. You can smell it. Mmm, really nice smell. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cure the salmon by putting a lot of salt, sugar and dill on top of it. I'll make sure to cover every single part of it really 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 nicely. So tomorrow the colour of the trout and the texture of the trout will change. So I'm going to wrap this in a cling film and then I will put it in the fridge overnight. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to prepare myself some homemade sour cream. In this part of the video, I'm going to show you on how to make your own sour cream at home. The ingredients is actually a very 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 simple thing. Heavy cream and lime. That's all. So I'm going to start by putting our container and I'm going to grate a certain amount of lime zest inside. And now I'll be adding 200 milliliters of heavy cream into a container. Alright, oops, but well. There you go. Next up, we have lime juice. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to squeeze a very not a lot amount inside the cream. 
I don't think the camera will be able to see this, but if you actually try this on person, you will be able to see the heavy cream curdling right in front of you. I'm going to give this a little whirl. Do not over mix because you want some really, really sour flavors. Maybe a couple of hours later, this sour cream is going to end up becoming solid. So I'm going to leave this in the fridge. Next up, we have our salmon tata. Pretty much the same thing I'm going to do with my sour cream. Just add in some lime, that's all. I'm going to leave this in the fridge overnight and by the time it reaches tomorrow, the color of this will change and so is the texture and everything. And now I'm going to make some cube avocado. So it's going to be a very easy thing to do. All you have to do is just slice down here to the seeds and turn the avocado around. Yep, I'm going to scrub out the seed here. This avocado is a little bit bright, so it's a little bit difficult to trim it off. Next, I'm going to use a spoon to just slowly dig out the avocado, very slowly. And I'm going to do the same here. Next, I'll be cubing the avocado. So next up, I have some tomatoes, some amount of basil leaves, some shallots, black pepper, salt and olive oil. I'm just going to make a simple tomato salsa. So start by this, remove the stem, cut it by half, remove the seeds and I'm going to dice every single one of these. Next up, we have some nice sweet fresh basil. Basil, they have a strong flavor and basil actually stings really really well with tomato. Go. Next, shallots. Here I go. Add just a little bit of salt, some black pepper. Give this a mixture. Tomato salsa is done. Next up, I'm gonna have very very simple condiments for my quesadilla. So I'm gonna start with some red pepper and green pepper. I'm probably going to use only the top parts for the quesadillas. So I'm going to cut here. Next, we have some shallots. Oh wait, condiments done. And now I have some mozzarella and some cheese. So I'm just going to grate the cheese right now. Grate the cheese, done. Next up, I have some mozzarella. Now in the pan, I'm going to toast some tortilla wraps with olive oil. So, just a little bit will do. Okay, here I go. Okay, nice. I'm going to get another wrap. Alright, that's all I need. Toasting is done. And now I'll be seasoning the trout cubes with some salt and black pepper. Let's start with the black pepper. Salt. So I'm going to give this a mix through. And I'm going to slightly cook the trout. Alright, that's all I need. In with my cheese, mozzarella, my condiments. I'm going to add some dry chili flakes. My salmon. I'm going to top it here with more cheese. Great. So, I'm going to press this right here and I'll be popping this thing into the oven. Okay, the oven is pretty much hot right now. Okay, and now we wait. This part here is done. I'm going to cut this into six portions. Now for some garnish. Alright, the chai has been sitting in the chiller over one night. You can see that the meat, it was kind of red yesterday. And now, this is what you call pink. A pink cured salmon tata. So, I got my ramekin here. I'm going to put my salmon tata inside. And I'm going to flatten it just by a little. Press it down. Next up, I have 
Next up, I have my tomato salsa. This level will do. There you go. And finally, my avocado. Here I go. And I have one small plate here. Beautiful job of art. I'm going to torch this just a little. And then, I have some lumpfish cover here. Just for decoration. I'm gonna put this right here. Well, it's pretty much a failed job of art. But oh well, it's nice. Well then, salmon tata, done. So this is what my Graflex actually looks like after it was marinated for over a night in salt, sugar and dill and some lime. So you can see that there's a lot of water coming out from it. So the next step what we're going to do is we're going to wash all of this out. This truck has already been cured and it's ready to eat. I'm going to wash this off. You can see that the fish is like kind of dry right now. And next part, I'm going to sprinkle it on top of the graflex. Just a little bit nicer. But look at the color. I didn't really expect that the truck ends up becoming super red in color. So now I'm going to just pre-slice it like this. Wow, the meat looks fantastic. Nice and red. <laughs> Sour cream on top, just like this. Graflex trout done. seems to be done for all the dishes. I'm kind of really really tired from all the work I've been doing. Okay, so now let's take a look. I'm going to start by eating the salmon tata. But I want to eat it with a piece of bread. So, cutting this out. Salmon, avocado and tomatoes goes in. Mmm, the salmon is really creamy. I'm going to put in more Lumpfish caviar. Let's see what it tastes like. The half cooked preserved trout is kind of creamy. Now I can feel all the fishy flavor from the lumpfish caviar. Take a look at this. You can actually see some salmon here, lumpfish caviar, tomato, and avocado inside. The combination is actually quite good. Kind of really enjoy it. It's very nice to eat some tata with bread. That's me, my opinion, but well. Next up, I have some sashimi. Yeah. My favorite Japanese dish is basically nothing but sliced salmon. I'm gonna put in the soy sauce. Okay, here I go. Itadakimasu, nice thin salmon. Mm, now this is really fresh, really nice and fresh. Mm, the meat is like jelly, but I have to say it tastes like a typical sashimi from any Japanese restaurant that I go to. But well, moving on to the next one of this. Quesadilla. Okay, I baked my quesadilla to perfection. I can feel the cheese, everything inside it. I'm gonna put some sour cream on top. Now I'm gonna pick it up and eat it. Sour cream is definitely a must when you wanna eat quesadillas. Wow, it really synchronizes the flavor. The salmon inside is creamy. Overall, the synchronization of the meal is quite nice. There's actually a reason why most of all the Mexican dish they have this salsa, avocado, sour cream. I think these quesadillas are quite nice to me. Mm. Mm. Time to move on to the next. Graflex. Okay, let's see what exactly it tastes like. To be honest, this is actually the first time I actually ate chopped Graflex. So here I go. Putting some sour cream on top. Hmm. Hold 
on a second. This time I'm gonna taste it with nothing but Graflex. Let's see what this like. Mm. The taste and texture really resembles smoked salmon, but I think I over marinated the chop. It has this typical dill flavor. Well, I guess I'm not really a fan of Graflex right now, actually. It's too edible to me. When I put in the sour cream, yeah, it tastes just about the same. Well then, that's all the meal I have actually prepared today. I don't think I can finish all of it by myself. I have to admit that the sashimi, when it's raw, I mean, you can feel that it's really, really nice and fresh. I'm going to give this a rating, which dish I feel is going to be the nicest among all. Number one, number two, number three, and I don't really like Graflex. <laughs> it's the first time I ate Graflex and I kind of felt I don't really like it. <laughs> maybe I soak it in a cure a little bit too long, or maybe that's just how it's supposed to be like but I don't think I'll be a fan of Graflex at all well, I'm gonna end my review now while I eat whatever I can eat right now <laughs> okay, I'm done eating in today's video, we actually did 4 different dishes using a fresh fjord trout now let's take a look the quesadillas, I really really enjoy them and I can say that half cooked salmon is really my kind of thing it really has a soft and creamy texture on the meat so the next thing we can say is the sashimi. Tastes pretty much like sashimi. About the salmon tata, well, I really should have put more lime into the salmon tata to make it a little bit more sour and more cured. But overall, that's just how it is. I really like the lumpfish caviar. It tasted like salt water bombs. When I eat lumpfish caviar and put it inside my tongue, those eggs it bursts and then it comes out a lot of salty kind of juice. Oh, that kind of juice sinks really well with the salmon tata. And finally, well, the Norwegian dish called the salmon gravlax. I didn't really enjoy it. Maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I did it right. Who knows? I do have to say that my salmon gravlax, it really tastes like smoked salmon without the smoke and plus the dill inside. That's what it tastes like to me. And it's also kind of chewy. I think that's pretty much normal. I've never been to Norway myself, so maybe one day I'll go there to check it out. But that's just about it. So that's my final conclusion of what I really think about the fresh trout. Well then, that's the end of my review for this product. And I hope you find this video kinda useful for you. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.